Hi everyone. I'm here with your February harvest of the month hands-on learning video. So our harvest of the month for February is beets. And before we dive in to our plant parts activity, I wanted to ask you to take a moment and think about why we're learning about beets in February. Why now? Why are we learning about something like summer squash or kale? Why are we learning about beets in February? So take a minute and think about that. Okay, if you think that we're studying beets in February because beets are a storage crop, just like our carrots and our winter squash the last two months, you are correct. Beets are another storage crop and they're a root vegetable. Now, the fact that they're a storage crop means that they can be stored for months at a time after they've been harvested in the fall. That means a farmer will harvest the beets probably around September, maybe even as late as October, and the beets will be totally fine to hang out in a bin in a cool, dry place until they're ready to be eaten. So that's why we study beets in February, because you can still find beets at some place like your local farmer's market or the co-op in Bozeman, even through the winter months, which is awesome for us. Have you ever eaten a beet? How did you eat that beet? I eat beets pretty frequently in the winter. And one of my favorite ways to eat them is just to roast them on a pan in the oven with some olive oil, salt, and pepper. It's really delicious. I know some of my friends will boil their beets and eat them like that. You could even fry your beets up in a stir fry with other vegetables. So for our activity today, we are going to be using a science journal. So go grab a science journal or a piece of paper if you have one. You'll also need some tools to write and color with. So I have chosen this pink marker, green marker, brown, and black. If you've got those colors, you're all set. But if you just have a pencil or pen, that's fine too. Whatever you have at home is great. Our activity today is learning about the different parts of the beet plant. You can see here, right off the bat, that we've got three plant parts just from this one beet. Now I am going to challenge you to draw a picture of this beet and label the different plant parts that you see. And I'm going to do the same. Let's go. Okay, looking at my beet, I'm going to start from this part and draw it going upwards. So it's kind of round and curves a little bit. Looks like there are a few little pieces coming off the end and separating. So I'm gonna draw those too. Bring it back up here. And then I think this side is a little bit bigger than that side. So I'm gonna draw that. There we go. And then it looks like there have been some pieces of this part that have been either cut off or that have fallen off. So I'm gonna make sure to include those pieces too, just by drawing a few little marks like that. And then I'll start drawing the tall pink parts. And they're different sizes, it looks like. And it looks like the pink goes all the way up into the veins here. So I'm going to do that and kind of draw the outline of my leaf there. Make sure you can tell that the veins are coming up and that they're still pink. Here's another one. And the leaves. Yeah, 
they've got some texture around the side. They're not totally straight. Here's another leaf, the vein. This one's kind of smaller down here. There we go, and the vein in this one. So let's see, one, two, three, four big leaves. I'll draw another one kind of back here. There's another leaf that you can't really see. And then one, two, three, four smaller ones. I'll just draw them coming out from behind over here. Now, since the tip of my marker is so thin, I'm just gonna kind of fill in this as much as I can, but there will still be some white. But if you have a thick marker, feel free to totally color in your beat completely. Or if you've watched our beat art video, you might even have some beat paint that you can use to fill this in. There we go. Now, same thing with my green marker. It's a thin tip, so I'm just gonna color in as much as I can, but it's not gonna be fully colored in. And that's okay, I'm using what I got. Do another fill in down here. I just wanna make sure that it's clear that these are the leaves, that they're their own plant part. They're separate from this part and this part. There we go. And then it looks like the green comes down a little bit, but for the most part, that looks pretty pink. So maybe I'll bring the green down just a little onto this plant part. But for the most part, it's pink. All right. Now it's time to label the plant parts. So I challenge you to label the plant parts on your own first before you watch the rest of this video. And then once you think you've got all of your plant parts figured out, you can watch the video to see if you have labeled your beat correctly. Go ahead. All right. How did you do? Were you able to figure out that this part down here, the part that we eat is the root and that these pink parts going up are the stems? How about that these parts were the leaves? I'm sure you did a great job labeling those plant parts. The next part of this activity is for you to try to write what these plant parts are used for. What is the function for each of the plant parts? And how does that function help the whole beet plant? So take a minute and write what you think below each of the labels. And once you think you have the right answer, start the video again and see what I've written. Okay, my friends, how do you think you did? Were you able to label the function of each of the plant parts? Let's see what I wrote and you can compare your answers. So first we've got the root 
That's this whole thing. Most people think that's the only part of the plant you can eat. Now the root we know grows under the soil. So it makes sense that the root absorbs water and helps stabilize the plant. That means if it's a really windy day, the root is down here locked in the soil, making sure the plant doesn't tip over. Next, we've got the stems. Those are those beautiful pink straw-like things. And they kind of act like a straw too. The stem transfers nutrients and water from the soil up to the leaves. And then we've got the leaves. Now the leaves photosynthesize sunlight for energy to help the plant continue to grow. Now, did you have similar answers? Good work doing this activity with me. And thanks for joining along. I wanted to do one more activity with you before we finish our video. And that is the, I notice, I wonder, it reminds me of activity. So in this activity, you will use either a beet or another fruit or vegetable at your house, or maybe you're just gonna use a plant outside. It's really up to you what you want to use. I'm going to do this activity using a golden beet. And I hope you'll find something in your house and do it with me. So for I notice, I wonder, it reminds me of, all you're doing is looking at your object and thinking about what you notice, what you wonder, and what it reminds you of. So I notice that this golden beet has had the greens cut off of it. I notice that the inside is beautiful shades of yellow, but I notice that it's not all one shade of yellow. There are some lighter spots and some darker spots. And I notice that the darkest spot is right up there towards the top of the root. And that makes me wonder, why is that spot so dark? I also wonder if these small, very thin roots are parts of the root that help stabilize the plant, or maybe those parts are just to bring in nutrients and water, while the beet itself does more of the stabilizing. I don't know, I wonder. I also wonder why this looks kind of shriveled. I wonder if it's because the leaves have been cut off. And I wonder if this golden beet tastes the same or similar to this red beet. Now, one thing that the inside of this golden beet reminds me of is the sun, a huge golden ball of light. That's what I first think of when I see the inside of this. This also reminds me of a cherry tomato, a yellow cherry tomato that is. One that's probably a little bit smaller of this, similar in color and equally as juicy on the inside. You know what else this reminds me of? This reminds me of one of my dog's balls. I feel like if I left this out on the floor, she would probably play with it thinking it was one of her toys. Now I wonder what you found about your item. What did you notice about it? What were you wondering? What did it remind you of? I find it helps while I'm doing these activities to take notes in my science journal or on a piece of paper. That way I can keep track of my observations. I challenge you to take notes as well. That really helps you understand the item. And then you can refer back to those notes when you have time or when you're in a library or around a teacher and ask them something that you wonder about. Maybe they know the answer. 
Well, friends, I hope you enjoyed this video, that you had fun drawing out the beat, and that you were able to participate in I Notice, I Wonder, It Reminds Me Of. I had a great time talking about the plant parts with you and acting like a scientist filling out my science journal with labels and functions. I hope you tune in to the rest of our beat videos. There's gonna be a delicious recipe and there might even be a full video about beet art. All right, until next time.